Hello again, this is John O'Neill and I make BioLeak. Today we're going to look at how to measure the water content of biodiesel. Water is the single most destructive contaminant that you will get in biodiesel. Uh, most contaminants like soap uh, will do long term damage over a period of weeks or months. Water can do instant damage in minutes to an injector pump or to an engine. This, uh, this means you've got to know exactly how much water is in your biodiesel and whether it is safe to use it or not. Um, water measurement equipment is normally very expensive, but I have devised something quite cheap and quite easy to put together. Uh, it's called the carbide manometer, and um, you should be able to put the whole thing together for around about 50 euros. The first part of a carbide manometer uh, is an ordinary kitchen scale. It only has to be accurate to one gram, so an ordinary kitchen scale is fine. These can be bought in Lidl and in other stores for, oh, around 10 euros. Um, next, you're going to need, again, an ordinary glass jam jar. Nothing special about it, just with an ordinary screw top. Um, the screw top, make a hole in the top, and fit a length of 5 mil clear tubing. Uh, this kind of tubing can be bought in stores like B&Q, uh, Aquarium Supplies, other places. Uh, not too hard to source. 5 mil is the best diameter to get. Uh, make a hole in the top and then you put the tube through and seal it with some um, hot glue gun or with uh, epoxy resin. Uh, once it has set, then arrange the tube down here in a loop, going down about two, three feet, coming back up again, and then going up the wall about another three to four feet. And you can fix it in place with small cable clips. Um, then, using a syringe, uh, inject some coloured water, just water with food colouring into it, uh, until you fill the bottom part of the loop here with coloured water. These will find their own level, and whatever level you have here, fix a meter stick, a meter rule, um, here, so that you can read off your measurement in centimetres when you do the test. Before you can do your test, you have to obtain some calcium carbide. This can be bought quite easily on eBay, about one and a half kilos in a tin, for around about 15 euros. Um, calcium carbide uh, is a chemical which, when it comes in contact with water, reacts quite violently and produces acetylene gas. And it's that property that we're going to use to measure our water content. In the past, calcium carbide was used to tar bicycle lamps, uh, such as these. This would have been a pre-war bicycle lamp, which contains calcium carbide and water and produces a settling gas which then burns with a bright flame and produces um, light. Now, um, when you get your calcium carbide, it will be sealed in a tin. Um, always keep the tin sealed. Don't allow air anywhere near the calcium carbide because that will cause it to react with the moisture in the air and the calcium carbide will quite quickly be useless. Calcium carbide comes in the form of stone. Uh, they just look like small pieces of gravel. Uh, before you use them, uh, you must crush them into a powder. Only crush as much as you need for that one test, because very quickly then atmospheric moisture will spoil it and render it useless. To begin the test, you must first of all measure out exactly 100 grams of biodiesel using your scales. Then add a large glass marble. This is to help the biodiesel and calcium carbide mix. Two small ones will do fine. Next, a cap full, I use the top of a wine bottle, full of crushed calcium carbide. You can crush it with a, a lump hammer on a big stone or a small anvil if you have one. Now, screw, without any delay, screw the cap on and begin to shake the 
glass jam jar gently. Hold it by the top so that your hand doesn't warm the glass. As you can see on the right hand side, the water level in the tube is going down quite rapidly and rising on the other side. As you can see, we already have 8 centimetres. This sample is quite a wet sample and I believe it will fail. Uh, it's rising quite rapidly, as you can see, and when we get to 18 centimetres, that will be the 500 parts per million level. Now, 500 parts per million is the maximum amount of water allowed in diesel fuel. To my mind, it's actually too high, and a figure of something like two to 300 parts per million is better. As you can see, this sample has clearly failed and has to be dried again. Uh, it would not be safe to use a sample like this 